First of all, guys, amazing job on this film. It had me on edge every step of the way. And there's always like a new layer as the story unfolds. But the first question I have for you guys is, uh, Caitlin, let me ask you, Grace represents uh, lust of one of the seven deadly sins. Is that a moniker she deserves? And who is Grace? I think, um, no, she does not deserve the sin as Aubrey says um, in her opening um, monologue. Um, I think it's, it's funny because, yeah, because she's like the least deserving of her sin, yet she's the one that kind of names everyone with the sins. Um, so it's interesting that she has that as her sin, but she um, she definitely aspires to portray that or take that on. Um, and I think that with Grace, there's so much going on um, internally. Um, a lot of times you see like popular girls in films being portrayed as just popular mean girls. Um, but with her, she you get to see kind of the flip side um, and what's going on internally in terms of her trying to figure out her sexuality, um, growing up in a religious household, um, trying to rebel against her parents, um, not wanting to follow in the same path as her parents and her brother. So she has a lot of internal struggles that she's dealing with and trying to keep inside. So I love that um, it really shows those two different perspectives instead of just the one, um, yeah, the one perspective of the popular kind of girl. Now, Brina, Aubrey represents pride. Can you talk to me about who she is? And, and honestly, the character really surprises me a lot, especially the further we go into the film. Yeah, I think and there's so much to pride and the, the main source of it for Aubrey is her faith. Her faith is like the pinnacle of her whole existence. You know, she lives for the Lord God, her savior. And all she wants is for the people she loves to be, to be as, you know, as safe and saved and holy as she is. And so her, her pride is kind of almost the sense of, of innocence to it because it is, you know, to her pure intention. But in the end, her pride is what kind of, makes her, you know, go a little, uh, there's, a, there's a twist, there's a twist. <laughs> a little bit of a twist. Now, for both of you, how does the rest of the school look at the sins or the seven deadly sins? This this group of, this clique of girls that they kind of run the school, it seems like. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's a lot of fear. Um, a lot of people, yeah, we, we almost like control using fear as the sins um, because even just our name itself is just so shocking to other people at the school. So I think that that's kind of, yeah, the dynamic between us and the, the other students. Yeah, yeah. and I think oh, those ahead. students, oh, sorry, sorry, you, no, you can go. go. Um, I think those students also kind of like, you know, you kind of want to be them. you kind of want to have a label it's a an easy way to kind of fit in you want to be pretty and cool and so those like even in real life there's always that popular girl at girl group at school they like oh I wish I was friends with them I wish I was invited to their parties like even though you know they might not be the most wholesome of or good for you kind of kind of people but yeah now uh Caitlin can you talk to me about Grace's relationship with her family I know you touched on it a little bit about how strict her household is but what's her relationship especially with her her, her pastor father. Yeah, I think it's really interesting because um, like I said, she sees kind of even her brother has gone the same in the same direction as her parents have. And she just doesn't want that for her life. And her dad is very um, controlling his hands on. He wants her to be this perfect daughter and he wants her to be seen in the community as this, this perfect Christian girl, which she does not identify with. So um yeah it's definitely a struggle with her father because she just doesn't doesn't a, a lot of their views just don't align with each other um especially when it comes to her sexuality and her not being able to voice um her going through those changes so which is obviously a, a, a something else the film touches on that we actually don't see a lot is is people dealing with their sexuality in this uh uh, this very uh, religious town. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I want to ask you, uh, Rena, is uh, Aubrey here, she seems like she has this inherent rivalry uh, with with um, Grace. Can you talk to me about the seeds that are planted there from the beginning? Yeah, so actually, I remember, Cor this isn't written into the script, but Courtney told Caitlin and I that these two girls used to be the, the best friends out of all the seven, it was them two. And then we get this new girl who comes in, Rath, who other Brenna plays, she's 
fantastic. I'm obsessed with her. <laughs> and um, she kind of, you know, steals the attention away from Aubrey. And so this is just a backstory, not in the script. But then that, you know, gives me that character element. Okay, so I'm feeling pain. I'm feeling hurt from, mm-hmm. from Caitlin's character, you know, kind of putting me to the side and not putting me as a priority anymore. And so I kind of feel that that black sheep effect in the in the family, in the in the friend group. Now, uh, Caitlin, Grace's family uh, almost feel like a cult themselves. Uh, can you talk to me about how uh, the family kind of parallels the, the Seven Deadly Sins group? I mean, obviously it's not to the extreme, but it, they do seem like they have a, a parallel there. Yeah, I think that there's, there's a very interesting dynamic because both groups, um, even more so Grace's family, are very, very strong in their beliefs and the way that things are done. And they're done in a certain way. And if they're not done in that certain way, then there's punishment. So um, I think that, yeah, that's a really good way of explaining and looking at it is that, yeah, they're almost like a cult themselves. That's, that's really interesting. Um, but yeah, and then with the, the seven deadly sins, it's, they're, they're very, it's almost like I'm creating my own cult, seeing my father do that, seeing my father be the pastor and kind of control the town. Um, I'm doing that, but with my friends and the complete opposite because I'm trying to rebel against my dad. So, yeah. Now, Brina, Aubrey really feels like an outsider in this group. Can you talk to me about how she fits into the group and kind of like uh, what brought her to the group? Yeah, so I think they're, they all they all go to a religious private Catholic, uh, religious school. So they can all relate, all the friends kind of relate to that. But Aubrey feels as if her faith is, you know, better than the other girls. And, but she also wants to fit in and she does love them. So she accepts them for all their sins, but that isn't going to, that isn't going to stop her from trying to change them to, for them to be who they want. So it's all, yeah, it's like a little controlled struggle for herself, even though she's not as brave as Grace to get the control that she wants. I mean, to a, until a point, um, yeah. Now, uh, Caitlin, we really see uh, Grace's character change in the beginning of the film, whereas Aubrey, we see it towards the end of the film. But in that beginning part where we see Grace start to change, can you talk to me about the challenges that, that uh, you face as an actress just in the mindset of, uh, with changing that character's uh, kind of tone once she has that, uh, that, that talk with her family? I think it all goes back to um, like teenage emotions, teenage rebellion, which I think we all go through uh, or all have gone through at some point. So um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it was challenging um, because I've had not necessarily similar talks with my family, but I have had disagreements with my family and in what um, my mom wants me to do or my family's beliefs as a whole. Um, So I think that really like drawing on that element and drawing on that dynamic helped me a lot in those particular scenes. And I did have times I did go through uh, a period in my life where I just didn't talk to my parents. And that is very unlike me because I used to tell my parents everything. And now as I get older, my parents are like, I think I rely on my parents more, more so now than I did um, before. So yeah. Now, Brina, you, your character goes through uh, a change towards the end of the film. Now, I don't want to spoil anything or give anything away. But how fun was that for you to sink your teeth into? And when you read the script, were you just as surprised as the viewers are probably going to be? Um, I, it was it was fantastic. It was like honestly an, an actor's dream. And now when I when I first read the script, the the sides to do a self tape for the character, I only had like a paragraph from that uh, to that end of the movie. And the minute I just read it, like I instantly understood like the vibes, and I was like, oh, I hope she wants me to like take it a little bit in this direction. I think she wants me to take it in. And then on the day of shooting it, she actually, uh, Courtney just gave me like the, the, the all in kind of thing to go for it, so. Now, I almost want to see a prequel to these characters because each one is based on their seven deadly sins. Uh, if there was an opportunity to reprise these roles, maybe in a prequel, would, would you guys be up for it? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Out of curiosity, uh, in your own per- like with your own personalities, which of the seven deadly sins would you relate to the most? I mean, I probably have a little bit of all, all seven in me, but uh, definitely gluttony would be the strongest one for me. I eat a lot of donuts and a I lot of ice cream, <laughs> at least a week and a half in one sitting sometimes. And so, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm not entirely sure. Um, probably gluttony as well. I love, I love sweets. I love sugar. Um, yeah. 
Now, in your guys' opinion, who is more devious, Grace or Aubrey? Hmm. I would say Aubrey, because I think that Grace has the right intentions going into it, but things get way out of hand. And um, she, yeah, ends up just digging herself into this huge hole. So I would, I would probably say Aubrey, but at the same time, like Aubrey's character in her mind, nothing is wrong with what she's doing. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Like Aubrey definitely like she believes full heartedly she's doing the right thing for the good of all humanity. But you know, she is, she's getting, she's a little sneaky about it. And she, I think she lies to herself about it. And that's, you know, her pride coming in her ego. So now I want to talk about your guys' director, uh, Courtney Page. This is her first uh, feature directorial debut. Um, she did an amazing job. Uh, can you talk to me about the collaboration process with her and, and her directing style? Yeah, well, I think it's awesome because she um, was originally an actor. So she has that kind of uh, different perspective that a lot of directors don't have um, in that she she knows what it what it's like to be an actor on set. So she was really able to guide us and help us in that way versus just um, being a director. She was almost like a, a coach in some um, in some aspects. So I think that that was awesome. She's super hardworking, super driven. Um, and she just like was able to get it done. And she's just one of the most determined pe per people I know. And it's, yeah, it was awesome working with her. Yeah, she's a hustler. Like it was so inspirational on set to see and it makes me want to be a female director and follow in her footsteps. But yeah, her creative visions are just so clear and detailed and she's very direct with what she wants, which works for my brain because that leaves no room for indecisiveness with the character development. So it was a breath of fresh air to work with. And she also wrote the film. So how does that help kind of inform the characters when you guys are on set and, and really getting to the mind, mind space of these characters? Well, I think the characters are like her babies. Like they're like her children because she... Um, she, in many ways, I'm sure, was drawing on experiences that she's had with particular people in her past. Um, so I think that, like Brenna said, she had such a clear vision of the characters and even more so because she wrote the script itself. So um, she was there from like day one and, and in the development of the project. So I think that that adds a really special element to the film as a whole. Yeah, it makes everything a lot more intimate, I feel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, uh, what was it about uh, the characters of Grace and Aubrey that you guys wanted to bring to the role that may have not necessarily been on the page? That's a good mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. I guess, I mean, it can come across that Aubrey is a bit of a, you know, yeah, sneaky little evil thing at some point, but I didn't want to, I didn't want Aubrey to actually feel that way or think that. So although it's on that way on script, like, I made sure that everything she had a reason for, a pure purpose, a pure belief, like it was all cut king from like love, like love was the main thing that she was trying to do. Nothing, nothing bad. Mm -hmm. Now, how about for you, uh, Caitlin? Yeah, I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier um, in having that like perfect exterior on the outside and then having a lot of stuff going on internally like grace is really struggling with um a lot of stuff at home a lot of stuff um with her sexuality with her breaking up with her boyfriend like there's a lot going on in her mind so i think one of the things that i really wanted to show was that it's not i'm not I, grace isn't just the popular girl you know there's a lot more to her than that and um, yeah, I love that that she's written that way because I think it's important because a lot of times we just see the popular girl and her being super popular, her being pretty, having a lot of friends. Um, but we never see kind of that other side to her. So um, yeah, popularity isn't everything, I guess, is one of the main messages. Now, I was a really big fan of watching all seven of, seven of you guys interact on set together because the chemistry is off the wall. Can you tell me any fun experiences you had with the rest of your cast uh, on this film? Yeah, so the first day um, before we started filming, we actually went to the mall and um, we took Polaroids. We uh, we took some photo booth pictures. We went into Claire's. Like we did a bunch of like, yeah, just things that you would do normally as like a high school teen. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then even like during like some of our lunch breaks, we would um, just hang out. And then also one time we filmed this music video dancing to um, Ariana Grande's seven rings so it was just like a really like 
well, I don't know, like we just bonded really well. And I think with, especially with horror and thrillers, your days are so long, so emotionally and physically demanding. So really, really quickly, you find that you form that, that bonding connection with the, the rest of the cast because you're going through so much together. Um, so I think that just happens inevitably. And we were just lucky to have an amazing, amazing cast and everyone was just so um, welcoming and friendly and yeah. Now, Brina, how about yourself? Any any fun memories that you can share? Yeah, do you know all those, the mall, the, the dances that Kalani, who plays Greed, um, that sh she would choreograph for us. <laughs> uh, we also, like, working in a small town together in Kelowna, uh, a lot of us weren't locals there, so we got to just, you know, have each other and hang out between our hotels off set. Like, it was just, it was a blast to, and, like, there's a lake there, too. It was just such a beautiful place to bond. Well, you guys did an incredible job. It's been a long time, I feel, since I've seen like a like a teen horror movie. So it's great to be back in this genre, but fantastic job, you guys. Congratulations on the film.